So first of all, I would like to thank the OpNet uh, community for accepting my paper, uh, well, my abstract, and letting me come over here to present uh, part of my work because this is not complete. This is uh, first steps. So uh, my topic is based on tactical communications. Um, why? Well, mainly because I'm working at the software in the software defined radio group within the communication systems department in the in uh, F uh, Fraunhofer Institute um, for communication, information processing, and economics. This institute has a long history dealing with tactical communications in many different areas, uh, satellital, uh, tactical, or strategic, and so on. So um, instead of uh, going through a normal introduction, I would like to show you a short, brief story about the real background of this work. And it's basically, uh, there is a new uh, technology for the hardware devices, which is called the software-defined radio. So as the name states, it's a radio defined by software implementation. So you have a device which, uh, which contains an FPGA or a DSP or both, even one, two or three GPPs, depends on the device. And you can deploy in this device uh, all the protocol and all oscillators uh, from the OC model. All the layers there are commonly named waveforms. And uh, in our case, we want to focus on the wideband waveforms. Wideband in the sense that it will use a wider bandwidth for the physical transmission. That means uh, in the tactical domain, they are not that common, and we want to achieve uh, more communication capabilities. So um, my introduction is uh, the agenda, sorry. I will give you a short briefing about the military requirements. Uh, how did we face this uh, work from the very beginning, doing a pre-selection from different civilian communication standards? which are the goals we want to achieve, and uh, critical models we found in our selected candidate. Uh, of course, modeling considerations. So as far as I have seen, both of, well, most of us, we face the same problems in some other way, although we can achieve some other goals or we are interested in some other parts of our modeling. What could be the community value? Well, mainly because this might be a very new topic for most of you, and of course, the conclusions. So as far as you can see here, this is a diagram that um, summarizes more or less the tactical devices you can find on the last mile. For those who don't know what's, what means the last mile, these are the soldiers or the autos they go with the soldiers. So you have to face different speeds. Our work focuses here at the combat network radio, which uses uh, a different frequency bandwidth or different spectrum. So you have the high frequency bandwidth or the very high frequency bandwidth. So for you, the very, the very high um, frequency can be understood to be like the radio FM. So below and above the radio FM, these are the frequencies we use for our carriers. So as far as you see, we have here uh, that these systems, they have low capacity, but they have, very, uh, they have to face very high mobility and they are working with very long ranges. So, uh, as I said, we want to increase the bandwidth. We don't want to be narrow band anymore. And this means we have to use uh, bandwidth hand, uh, higher or wider than 100 kilohertz. And our distances, they are not like in a typical room or building or corridor. We have to deal with up to 20 kilometers. Of course, the mobility is uh, very different. I mean, we have the soldiers, they can be running because they are scared. Or we have the autos, they are like uh, moving forward the company and so on. So the differences uh, between the speeds, it's, yeah. Well, there are differences between the speeds, actually. So one of our requirements is the self-organizing infrastructure. The network must be a um, smart network. And of course, we need bidirectional communication systems that support real time. And of course, uh, again, supports multicast groups. And we want to put, as well, the IP capabilities, because in a narrow band waveform with the new IP version 6, it's completely impossible. And of course, it has to be an ad hoc capacity, mainly because we cannot face any single point of failure. That means if we use a centralized network, like uh, for instance, mobile network, we have a BTS. And if the BTS is uh, over, well, there's no network anymore. And we have to avoid that. Some of these requirements are fulfilled actually by some of the civilian communication standards, but not all of them. So let me tell you why. As I said, we did a pre-selection, and we took four different natural of civilian standards. We uh, 
check the broadcast systems, cellular systems, access networks, and trunk radios. As for the broadcast, for those you don't know, digital broadcasting television, cellular UMTS, GPRS, LTE, access networks like wireless LAN, WiMAX, for instance, and trunk networks Tetra Tetra Pol. Um, we did a cross check with the military requirements, with the technical aspects of its standard, but basically we focus on three characteristics. First of all, high data rate. In this case, the trunk radios are rolled out. Otherwise, we have to spend a huge effort to change the, what they call the signal in space. Uh, it has to be also, uh, the system has to be bidirectional, or the waveform has to provide the bi bidirectionality. And for that, again, the broadcast systems uh, need to be enhanced as well, and this, is, uh, this implies a huge effort. Another um, feature that we consider very important is the scalability. The scalability, especially in the frequency domain. So for that, the OFTM transmission technique is very suitable because we can change the amount of uh, subcarriers. And um, very easy, actually, uh, in different kind of, um, yeah, different sizes of bandwidths. So, how did we come up uh, with the solution? Well, it was mainly off the end who decided what to use or what to consider, actually. And for that, we took four different um, civilian communication standards. Um, LTE, mobile WiMAX version, in its ad hoc version, the dot .16e, and the wireless LAN dot .11n, because of the MIMO technique and the high throughput enhan enhancement techniques. Again, how can we take only one? Well, and at that moment, we have to um, be more pragmatic. So for that case, we were searching for available source code. So uh, by that time, we didn't find anything about WiMAX on LTE. Recently, I found out uh, an institute from Switzerland, I guess, is doing something for GPRS with some framework which is called Osmocom, if I'm not wrong. But, well, we didn't find anything like this. That's why we stick to the wireless line. Another very important thing for us was the decoupling between the Phi and Mac layer functionality. In the wireless LAN, it's uh, high decoupled, so you can analyze only the physical layer without checking into account the Mac layer for the convolutional codes, for the synchronization algorithms, and all the DSP algorithms you want to use. And the Mac layer, it's a CSMA CA protocol, as most of us uh, we know already, and we have learned and studied and analyzed. And this is mainly why. Um, once we had our selected civilian communication standard, we have to draft our own goals. What do we want to achieve with our new wideband waveform? Well, the basic goal, as usual, in the tactical domain is to support the command and control services, which are mainly um, supporting the chain of command. This is a very generic term, but what does it actually mean? I mean, what do they need? Well, in a sense, it's a self-organizing self wideband waveform, okay? Uh, this is nothing but a network that it's able and to understand that it needs to self-heal every time it, ha it happens something like um, changes in the environment, physical surroundings as we have seen with some big obstacles or uh, no, jamming situations. For instance, we have a huge interference, we cannot communicate, we are blind, electromagnetically uh, speaking. And besides that, we have also to provide enhanced uh, throughput. I mean, the throughput must be kept at a reasonable level for them to speak, for them to share uh, GPS positions, for instance, for them to share um, some of the services that they require. So in this case, we can use uh, something that was called originally multi-level of precedence and preemption, but this is in a sense the prioritization of services, like uh, letting the high priority uh, move forward. For that, of course, you need the efficient allocation and management of resources. Resources in the sense that um, the time you use for a transmission, the size of the queue, or to uh, refresh the data and to send the last, uh, the, 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 the newest one, and drop the old ones, talking about GPS and positions, for instance. And this is actually uh, reduced into an op optimizing the channel utilization. So whenever we are going to use the channel, we have to be sure that it will broadcast or send something that it's really useful. So we cannot just transmit something and what? Well, we will see. For them, uh, for this uh, action, we have to care about the congestion situations. This is a huge handicap or a huge, um, a very important situation we have to care about. 
And again, the resources uh, need to be managed and the hyperity message need to be transmitted right away. And if you are wondering what's a very high priority, well, the panic button. There is an ambush and they need to report immediately there is an ambush. They just press the panic button and the message must be broadcasted and run away, of course. So for this candidate, um, how do we face this? Well, for you, you have to understand this standard was basically designed for indoor environments. So the routers you see with a lot of antennas, this is the standard, but this is not the case for us because we are working on the outdoor field. So this means that we have to find the critical modules. In the reference too, I also provide at uh, the end of this uh, presentation, we uh, found several critical modules in the physical layer and in the MAC layer. In the physical layer, for instance, the FTN symbol is too short. So the guard interval, so-called cyclist prefix, is too short for the propagation delay you have to face with 20 kilometers distance. That could be a critical point you have to further analyze and see the impact in the receiver, for instance. Uh, in the same reference, it was also, there was a statement uh, that states that uh, the CSMA CA is a critical module in order to provide uh, real-time traffic because uh, there is a lack of quality of service uh, support. Well, this statement is a hit statement and it's quite controversial and it was suggested uh, to apply a TDMA solution, of course, and not any kind of solution. So they took into account another different military standard, which is or which was based or designed actually for a um, military system, so-called soldier form. Uh, this protocol is the USAP MA. It's a very long name. I'm so sorry, I don't remember what the acronym means. I think it's unified um, multiple access, something like that. It's very very long name. However, as I said, this statement is kind of scary, and for that we have to face some issues. The first one is to identify whether the TDMA performs better than the CSMA and under which kind of circumstances. That's a hard topic because we have to define clearly a real and a theoretical scenario. We have to show the real performance, possible real performance, of course. And of course, if it changes, it has to be done. Like we have to use the TDMA frame. Uh, as I said, the selected candidate has to be modified, which means in a sense we have to change the PDU format of the MAC layer, of course. And according with the military standard, we have to adapt the original TDMA frame to our needs, to our system, to our OFTM uh, physical layer. This is mainly why in our new MAC, new MAC design, uh, we have used both um, sources and we have created a combi out of it and in this combi, we use, for instance, the multiple uh, frame aggregation, the MAC and hinge technique for high throughput. And um, we plan as well to include the prioritization between QS, uh, which is explained in the standard .11e, also using .11p. And um, in order to make a waveform that reacts fast and that avoid too much overhead or too much uh, complexity, we have embedded uh, what we believe it's the more, one of the most important services, which is the push to dog behavior. So the push to dog behavior has been actually included in, in the MAC PDU in form of a signaling protocol. So it's just a type within the MAC protocol instead of being a family of protocols like voice over IP. So we don't use any IP and we use the uh, addresses at the MAC layer and uh, we try to be uh, as fast and as efficient as possible. So, modern considerations. Well, um, hard topic, of course. Uh, from our perspective, uh, although we use mixing, and in the community has been said that this is the best framework for analyzing or for simulating wireless uh, LAN networks, for us it's not enough mainly because map, the mapping class works at the packet level. So this is not enough for the resolution we want to achieve. For us, we have to work at the baseband samples. That means uh, we want the guys working at the file layer using the DSP algorithms within OpNet. And of course, this implies that we have a huge complexity. We have to uh, somehow parallelize our computations and we have to speed up our simulations because we don't want to simulate two weeks, only 10 seconds of uh, simulation time. 
We believe, we don't know for sure, uh, feedback is very much welcome, that we could find a workaround if we modified the signal class by avoiding the use of mappings, including a time series vector, where we store the IQ samples. That could be one of the ways. Of course, where we can think in other ways, like for instance, the new physical layer introduced in the ANET framework. So, more challenges. Other propagation environments. Most of the propagation environments you find in, in the literature are related with the indoor environments, uh, pedestrian movements, which is very nice. Uh, another Fraunhofer Institute from Nuremberg, from IIS Institute, together with the University of uh, Erlangen, did some measurements in different German cities. Uh, Munich, Nuremberg, Hamburg, and so on. Well, I don't know if Hamburg was actually in the measurement. But in any case, they were measuring the real frequency band, VHF, and they were measuring the real transmit power. I mean, not the common one within a room, 100 milliwatts. They were using 5 or 50 watts. And they were also publishing some papers related with um, yeah, pathos model, tap delay model, multipath model, and so on. More challenges are the high demand of uh, on quality of service, so uh, queuing strategies, basically. And the self-organizing behavior. Our Mac layer has to be aware of uh, what's going outside. And that means basically that by using a local behavior, we can implicitly uh, uh, achieve a global synchronization. That means if I'm aware that I have two hidden nodes using time slot X and Epsilon, I avoid using these time slots in order to avoid interference at my receiver. And this can be done, of course, uh, with some management protocol also in the, in the, um, within the Mac protocol. So another very important point is that we deal with different mixed topologies. And we can deal with mesh, topology star, full mesh, and of course, high nodes. How to model this? Well, it's so hard or even harder than modeling the traffic behavior because we cannot go with the soldiers to put them a GPS tracker and then load it into the simulator. So we have to come up with something else. We are still wondering how to get this, yeah. <coughs> useful information. Why do we have uh, this kind of topologies? Mainly because of the surroundings. The network might be might get split, and they might rejoin again. And that means that we have to deal as well with the overhead introduced by the management. So they have to be aware who is there, uh, who I can uh, talk with, and it has to be reported as fast as, fo as possible. Another thing that is also very interesting, when we haven't analyzed that, it's the rider silence behavior. So if you are compromised, you don't transmit anything because you don't want to let them know you are there. So you just avoid using your waveform. Or you just tell your waveform, be quiet, don't do anything, just keep listening if your colleagues are around. And this has to be also reported to all protocols. For instance, uh, that could be the case, avoiding using LSAs from a routine protocol or hello messages or management protocol from the Mac layer, or beacons. So don't send anything and keep listening and keep your work what's going on outside. And the last uh, challenging part of the modeling are the mobility patterns. So how can we model this uh, troop formation or a convoy formation, or what happens when there is an ambush? Of course, we can. Well, we could simulate something. Um, the University of Bonn has done something related with that, with disaster area scenarios in the World, World Cup in 2006. They were working together with uh, policemen, firemen, and so on, and they were actually uh, doing an um, emulation about these disaster area scenarios, and they were collecting all the GPS traces and trying to get a statistical behavior out of it. I don't really know if this actually fits with uh, our working area or our yeah, with our model. But it's another yeah, very interesting source to take into account. So what could be the community value? Well, um, we have started modeling the mixing framework. It doesn't mean we are going to be there forever, so we can exchange to any framework. We can use both. It depends what we want to analyze. But if uh, more research has to be done uh, within the mixing framework, uh, we actually encourage the people to try to uh, program new propagation models. The ones I explained about the other Fraunhofer Institute could be, for instance, very good. Or some new mobility patterns. Or, for instance, a push to talk speaker behavior. So trying to get rid of a Poisson distribution and trying to combine, actually, the mobility behavior with the push to talk speaker model with the mobility behavior. 
that's a kind of tricky task, but still we have to deal with it somehow. How accurate? By now I cannot say a word. We are still trying to analyze the complexity of this problem. Uh, that's a fancy idea I had. Uh, I found an open source uh, speech coder, which is called Codec2. It's very similar to the military one. They, it's broadly used. And I would love to test that with the hardware in the loop. But I'm not really sure if Mixim is able to do that or is only INET. I have to check that out. If someone can tell me something about it. No? OK. In any case, uh, I'm also planning to use uh, to integrate my model with, within INET. Um, I'm aware of uh, changes between MAC addresses and A-frames classes and so on. So what could be beneficial of this? Uh, well, mainly using or trying to research what's better, routing or flooding. I mean, is actually routing so good for wireless LANs? Everyone is saying yes or no. I'm not really sure. But as far as I understand, probably it's not the best idea. It's quite um, bandwidth uh, consuming. So um, for you to understand how could we treat this waveform within the networking scope? Well, that could be actually uh, an autonomous system if you use OSPF. And if you use uh, BGP, you can redistribute the routes in order to understand what's going on there. Or you can just flow the mechanisms, and then you can discover which are your minimum connecting set. I mean, using some sort of uh, graph algorithms, you identify the three main uh, nodes in the network that they cover the whole network because they are in a huge um, hill or they are at the, in a um, very good position. So we could use, for instance, dynamic relaying. Dynamic relaying, opportunistic relaying, there are many different methods. So um, some other things uh, that are very interesting to analyze are the combination between this uh, wireless LAN or wideband waveform with a local area network. Why? Because probably um, at the command post, someone wants to talk with a soldier, which is uh, the very front. And that could be if we could have a gateway or a half radio, half uh, I don't know, router, something that actually bridges both networks and let the service to pass through it. And um, that, for instance, could be useful for the IP version 6, for the MTU path discovery method, or investigating how the tunneling works regarding security matters. And, well, many other options there, pretty much. Um, yeah, you can analyze that. So, um, just to summary um, what I have seen saying for the last uh, couple of minutes, we are um, starting a new research towards the tactical domain with uh, what we call the wideband waveform. Um, we have uh, used the civilian standards because they are pretty much uh, in a good position. There is a lot of research and we can have uh, possibly uh, more support that was basically our intention. However, we have to identify the critical modules because we face some other scenarios. And that well, has to be understood by the people that want to continue this research. And it might be also challenging because we don't have many resources in this regard. I don't know. So uh, by now, as I said, we use the Omnet++ and Mixim framework. And we plan also, as I said before, to increase our research towards propagation models, anti-jam capabilities. We have, for instance, published already a new anti-jam demodulator. And some other project can deal with the network surveillance and control, or uh, analyzing some other queuing strategies, what could be the best uh, regarding not only the um, yeah, complexity of the queue or the buffering size, but uh, with what could be the shortest lifetime of a packet uh, being in a queue. <coughs> so reporting the last position must be broadcasted right away. If we cannot do it, we send the very last position because it's the only one that matters. So that has to be controlled somehow. And for that, we need some new queue strategies, not simple last input, last output, something else, something a little bit smarter. So I hope you have understood part of it or all of it. And um, if you have any question, please go ahead. Thank you.
one or two short questions. I'm sorry, I, it took too long. Okay. So, one or two short questions. Basic application domain, any input maybe on the voice over IP recorder. That's the only thing that I can imagine that goes in the same direction as you want to do with the hardware and the voice testing, but I think the offer is not here. Questions? Okay. Okay, I guess we have lots of time now for the bigger coffee break. Perfect. Thanks again, speaker, and uh, we have a second talk.